up guys, John Haas here, happy nursing. Today I wanted to answer a couple cardiac NCLEX questions with you guys, and in order to do that, we're going to use the book 301 Cardiac NCLEX Questions, and to help us answer those questions, we are going to use uh, NCLEX flash notes. You can see here, 77 must know nursing topics. So we're gonna be referencing between the two. Uh, so I've got the book pulled up here, of cardiac NCLEX questions. And then I've got over here our NCLEX flash notes. So that's gonna help us and we're gonna work through uh, three or four questions today and let's see how we do. So I selected a couple questions. Our first question is cardiogenic shock. Now this can be a pretty complicated topic uh, for a lot of new nursing students, but let's uh, check out this question and see how we do. So cardiogenic shock usually occurs from which of the following conditions? So this is a pretty straightforward question. It's a uh, uh, yes or no. One of the four is going to be correct. So we have acute blood loss, hypovolemia, spinal cord injury, or acute myocardial infarction. So let's bounce over here, like we said, uh, to our NCLEX flash notes. And let's look up cardiogenic shock. So here we go, cardiogenic shock. So it's complete pump failure or the heart causing loss of oxygen and blood and then causes. So that's what we wanna know. We wanna know shock usually occurs. So we wanna know a cause for shock. Myocardial infarction, in-stage cardiomyopathy, uh, papillary muscle or valve rupture, cardiac tamponade or pulmonary embolism. All right, so cardiogenic shock usually occurs from one of the following. And let's go ahead and select acute myocardial infarction. I think that's going to be our correct answer. So let's look at the rationale. That's for question number five. So let's go way back here. We've got some pretty in-depth rationales here, so they're a bit long. All right, so acute myocardial infarction, that was correct. Good job. Cardiogenic shock is decreased cardiac output and evidence of tissue hypoxia when there is still adequate intravascular volume. So we have the right volume. Cardiogenic shock usually occurs from an acute myocardial infarction or dysrhythmia. So good job, guys. We got that one. Let's do another question. Let's see here. Go back to the questions, and the next question I picked is also on cardiac because we're in this cardio, uh, this cardiac uh, NCLEX questions book. Let's see here. Let's go to question 47. A client with heart failure has been ordered to reduce her sodium intake in order to take better control of her insulin of her condition. I don't know where I came up with insulin. Uh, a client with heart failure, so a condition is heart failure, has been ordered to take to reduce her sodium intake in order to better control her condition of heart failure, which best explains why reduction in sodium intake will affect symptoms of heart failure. Okay. Too much sodium is associated with fluid retention. Too much sodium has been shown to cause cardiac dysrhythmias. Increased dietary sodium leads to greater risk of atherosclerosis. Increased sodium intake damages the heart valves and affects circulation. So one thing I like to do is to always throw out obviously wrong answers. So increased dietary sodium uh, leads to greater risk of atherosclerosis. Um, this is not answering or addressing anything that we want with heart failure. Um, So again, let's go over to our NCLEX flash notes. And for this one, we want to look up heart failure, which happens to be on page 13. All right. So the heart is a pump. It circulates blood throughout the body. Heart failure, pump failure. Pump failure, heart failure occurs when the heart cannot pump enough blood to supply the body's needs. So pump failure, Causes myocardial infarction, hypertension, valve disorders, diagnostics, BNP, a hormone secreted by uh, cardiomyocytes in response to stretching of the ventricles, echocardiogram, do look at uh, EF, ejection fraction, 
chest x-ray, complications, volume overload, decreased perfusion. All right, so therapeutic management. The goal is to decrease the workload on the heart while still increasing cardiac output. All right, so we have these valve disorders, insufficient pump, hypertension, and we're going to see stretching the ventricles, complication, volume overload, as well as decreased uh, perfusion. All right, so we have peripheral edema as a big one here. Uh, renal perfusion, decreased urinary output, slow capillary refill. All right, so let's go back over to our question here. A client with heart failure has been ordered to reduce her sodium intake in order to better control her condition, which best explains where a reduction in sodium will affect symptoms of heart failure. So too much sodium is associated with fluid retention. So waterfall of salt, if we're taking all the sodium, it's uh, going to stay there. And if we're not able to salt full as water, if we're not able to get this fluid out due to heart failure, due to pump, we're going to see that increased retention. So let's look at, uh, so we're going to go with A. Let's look at our answer here. Let's see, let's go to 47. This is a big one. It's really important to understand heart failure. Pretty much, uh, well, a large uh, percentage of your clients or your patients are going to have heart failure. So understanding is really good. So it says uh, too much uh, sodium intake is associated with fluid retention. We got that right. Fluid retention is a risk for clients with um, fluid retention, which causes uh, volume overload associated with heart failure. Most clients with heart failure are... Um, counseled to avoid excess sodium, and they often need to take medications to eliminate excess fluid in the body. So if we're already retaining all this fluid, um, that salt, and we're not able to get it all out, it could further increase those symptoms. All right, so let's do another question. Let's do question 61. A client with an MI, myocardial infarction, three days ago is being transferred from the ICU to the cardiac step-down unit. Which is the most important, most important piece of information to be transmitted to the receiving nurse? So we've got a client who had an MI. They've finally kind of stabilized an ICU. We want to take them over to the cardiac step-down unit. Which is the most important piece of information? The IV infusion rate, that's important. Data blast bowel movement, also important. The client's level of chest pain obviously important the current heart rate and rhythm all right let's go ahead and flip over to NCLEX flash notes again uh, and we can find this on page 18. okay here we are with myocardial infarction again um so we know it's a sudden restriction of blood flow as you can see here in this image uh, which leads to decreased or increased ischemia causing death of muscle tissue. So assessment, we have all this subjective assessment, but let's jump down here into objective assessment. They're gonna be hypotensive and bradycardic. Obviously they're gonna have an ST elevation on a 12 lead, which would indicate STEMI. So our EKG is important there. Therapeutic management, medication management, obviously very important. Here's a bunch of medications we can give. Monitor EKG, rest, decrease, anticipate provider orders, 12 lead EKG. All right, so you can see we're needing to monitor this rhythm, right? That's how we're going to see uh, uh, an MI happening when we can't get in there and look at these vessels of the heart. Uh, so monitoring that EKG is gonna be really important. And how can we do that? Monitoring that heart rate and rhythm, that is an EKG. While we need to know infusion rate and we need to know bowel movement, those you know are, are clearly not, if we look at our ABCs, those are not up there with our ABCs. We're talking about volume, we're talking about uh, GI. So let's set those aside. When we get over to here to uh, C and D, we're talking about the heart. Chest pain, obviously the heart. Um, but chest pain can be for a lot of reasons, right? Current heart rate and rhythm, that is absolutely going to tell us 
uh, the stability of the client uh, and uh, if they're actively having a heart attack, which hopefully we wouldn't be transferring them in that case. So let's look at uh, 61 rationale. Let's see. Again, this is the cardiac NCLEX questions book up there on Amazon, 301 cardiac NCLEX questions. And we're getting all of our info here from um, NCLEX flash notes, also uh, available up there on Amazon. So here we go. It does say D is right. But I think a lot of us are going to be thinking chest pain, right? So let's read why. Uh, this would not be the most important piece of information. So it says, this information is certainly part of the report, but the most information is directly related to the cardiac status now of the client. Chest pain, again, could be GERD, could be whatever. Um, but this is directly related to cardiac status or, or uh, heart rate and rhythm. When transferring from an ICU to a, to a cardiac step down, the most important piece of information to be passed on is the current heart rate and rhythm in case the rhythm changes en route to the cardiac step down unit, right? We have to get this patient there. Anything can happen in that case, so we really need to be monitoring this. Uh, let's take look at this bowel movement one just for funsies. Uh, this information is certainly part of the report, but the most important information is directly related uh, to the cardiac status of the patient. So excellent here. Inclex flash notes really helped us out. There's a train passing right now in the background. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Uh, our last question, let's do question 64 in 301 cardiac NCLEX questions. Now I think there's a garbage truck out there. <laughs> Hopefully you guys aren't picking up all of that. Okay, all right, here we go. This is a select all that apply. Which of the following conditions puts a client at risk of cardiogenic shock? We've already kind of... Uh, answered one question on cardiogenic shock. So let's see if we can keep uh, that in mind. So cardiac tamponade, damaged heart valves, PE, pulmonary embolus, DVT, deep vein thrombosis, or hypotension. All right, so let's go and look at this. And we're going to go back again to page 17 because we looked at this before. So our question was, which of the following conditions puts a client at risk for cardiogenic shock? puts them at risk. It's complete heart failure. So let's look at some of our causes. Myocardial infarction, which was what we did um, look at before. Cardiomyopathy, papillary muscle or valve rupture, cardiac tamponade, pulmonary embolism. Okay, complete pump failure causing loss of oxygen. So what's going to cause it to, so we have cardiac tamponade could occur, pulmonary embolism, myocardial infarction, Let's see how many of those are in there. Cardiac tamponade. That was absolutely there. There we go. Cardiac tamponade. Pulmonary embolism. That was there. Pulmonary embolism. And let's look here. Hypotension. Cardiogenic shock is complete pump failure causing. So what's going to cause pump failure? Deep vein thrombosis, pulmonary embolism, damaged heart valve, capillary muscle or valve rupture. There we go. So we see those three there. We don't see these other three on here. So let's go following what... Inclex Flash Notes is telling us, just dropped a paper. Uh, let's go with what Inclex Flash Notes told us. And let's see if we're right here on A, B, and C. So let's go down to question 64. There we are. Ah. All right, question 64, which is the following cardiac, cardiogenic shock, cardiac tamponade. Cardiogenic shock is due to cardiac failure causing profound decrease in cardiac output. Sources include myocardial infarction, end-stage cardiomyopathy, valve rupture, cardiac tamponade, or pulmonary embolism. There we go. Damaged heart valves lead to cardiac pump failure and leads to cardiogenic shock. A PE places a 
client at risk for cardiogenic shock. So we got that one right as well. Uh, good job, everybody. That was just four questions uh, from the book, 301 Cardiac Inclex Questions. And to help us answer those questions, we used Inclex Flash Notes. I hope this was helpful, not only you know in um, working through these specific questions, but hopefully this helped you think through uh, Inclex questions and different ways that you can answer them and work through them. Um, so yeah, so thanks for taking a minute to work through some questions with me. I hope this was helpful. We love you guys. Go out and be your best selves. Happy nursing.